I want to say a warm, very happy welcome to each and every one of you. And I'm so excited to be here today. It's, this is such a wonderful church. I had such a great time during the first service. I love that this is a family church and that it's a multi-generational church. It really is a church that the Lord has blessed with the most loving spirit. His presence is so strong upon all of you. So it's just wonderful to be here today to share the medical ministry that I do with all of you. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the ministry itself and how it came to happen in the Lord. And then I'm going to be sharing some amazing testimonies of the Lord's love and his healing. And he's truly the star. Um, I'm here to really introduce what he's been doing in the Bay Area with so many supernatural, miraculous healings, thousands of them now. So just to, to give you a little bit of background about how a doctor <laughs> is standing in front of you in a, in a wonderful church to talk about ministry. Um, I do come from the medical field, but I'm also an ordained minister. So I combine the two. And started out as a physician. The Lord led me into the field of medicine through his heart. Um, it's it's an amazing field. It's an interesting field. And it's very much based in technology. But the driver for me from the very beginning was to love and serve others and that I could do it really well through this field. So I started out um, in practice across the bay. I'm located in the Mid-Peninsula area and had a very large practice, a wonderful practice, very interesting, satisfying practice. And I was doing a lot of teaching during my time um, when I was strictly doing the medical work that I was doing. Um, I was teaching a lot. I was on the clinical faculty um, teaching at Stanford University's School of Medicine and um, enjoyed that a great deal. Now I do nothing with the medical center at Stanford. I'm actually in ministry there now. So I've moved over to the main campus and I've been doing a prayer and healing ministry that is a supernatural miracle ministry there which is really earth-changing for a school like Stanford, which is very secular. It's very much of a striving school with brilliant students. And I was asked to come there to bring the supernatural um, miracles of the Lord to this very secular campus. And I've had a great time. I've seen, I've seen some amazing miracles over at Stanford. Um, there was one student that I prayed for there who was suffering from very severe chronic fatigue syndrome. And um, he could barely get through the school year. He was a freshman. And he also had severe asthma and was just not functioning. When he came to me for prayer, he said, I think I'm going to have to drop out of school. He said, I don't see how I'm going to get through. So I prayed for him. And we went on a break at that time. And when we, we started up again, he came back and I did not recognize him. He had been um, anxious and exhausted and panicky. And, and what approached me was a student that was full of energy and life and, and joy. And it turned out that right after I had prayed for him, he had had a complete healing. And he went back to the doctors at the medical center and when they reevaluated him, they looked um, at his original blood sample, which was, uh, had been frozen. And when they rechecked him, there was no sign of, at all of the disease. So not only had the Lord healed him, but the Lord had healed his blood, which was sitting in a freezer at the medical center. So it was very exciting. He was just going all over school, sharing this. The other ministers were really excited. And so even at a place like Stanford, I've seen some amazing things. So during this time when I was um, you know, totally in the medical field, one thing that I did do was I had a very um, kingdom-based practice. 
So I was really drawn by the Lord to love the patients that I was working with and, and really connect with them on a heart level. I was the doctor that you would go to if you wanted a doctor to give you a big hug. I loved hugging my patients. I loved connecting with them in a really personal way. And I was also very good on the technical side. So I had exceptional results as a physician, but I did not see supernatural miracles. That I did not see when I was in a regular full-time practice. About six and a half years ago, the Lord spoke to me, and he told me that he wanted me to move into ministry. And I was completely obedient to him, and I became ordained at that time. And that is when everything shifted in my life. Nothing has ever been the same since that time that I became ordained. At that time, he came fully into the work that I was doing. And for those of you that don't really know much about my ministry, I immediately began to minister in many hospitals in the Bay Area, in the ICUs, the critical care units, the burn units, working with the most seriously ill patients. Many of the patients that I worked with were just hanging by a thread. They were just barely surviving. They were the sickest of the sick. And they were not people that you have great expectations for. You don't expect in the medical field to see you know, miracle healings of these people. I was praying for people who were quadriplegic, who are virtually unhealable. It's a very small number of quadriplegics that ever walk again. You all know what a quadriplegic is? Everybody here knows. So that means it's a person who often has fractured their neck, broken the bones of their neck, and neurologically they have virtually no function below their shoulders. They can't really use their arms, they can't walk, and they're, you know, in wheelchairs for the rest of their life. And the Lord showed me that he could raise up a, an army of quadriplegics who could walk again. I saw many quadriplegics walk while they were still in the hospital. And I've seen quadriplegics now jog, climb mountains, walk, bowl, swim. It's just been amazing. And we all know about Christopher Reeves, who was our most famous quadriplegic in this country. He never walked again. And he had millions and millions of dollars of the best medical care. So much resources, so many millions of dollars were donated to his care. And when he passed on about 10 years after his accident, he never had walked again. He had very little function restored. Yet with prayer, I've seen an army of quadriplegics walk because it's the Lord that's healing them. And there is nothing that the Lord can't do. He can heal anything and everything. Yay, God. <laughs> so when I was in the hospitals, I was seeing amazing things. I saw limbs grow out. I saw the blind see, the deaf hear, um, the, the crippled walk. People healed from flesh-eating diseases. I prayed for people with third-degree burns where the burns would just drop off of them. Supernatural weight loss miracles, 30 to 50 pounds at a time when I would pray. And we don't tend to think of our local hospitals as a place where you're going to see miracles. We think that you have to go to Mozambique or Brazil. But the Bay Area, we don't see these things here. Not like this. But I was seeing them as a daily occurrence. It was amazing. What I loved about how the Lord brought me into ministry was that I could see that he wanted to combine two things that usually are not combined, which is the medical field on one side and the ministry feeling on another. And we do not combine these two things. People go to their doctors for their medication, their surgical procedures, and they go to their minister for prayer. And often we see through ministry great results. And we see through the medical field, we don't see cures and we don't see healing because that is not part of our model. We manage illness, we manage sick cases, but we do not expect healing. 
We don't expect rheumatoid arthritis to be healed or lupus to be cured or cancer to be cured. And frankly, we don't see cures. We see people going into remission and then often they fall back. So, you know, we just do our best. We work really hard. But it's not what the Lord can deliver. And sometimes people are doing everything. They're seeing their doctor, they're getting prayer, and they're still not healing. I'm sure that all of you have seen that at one time or another, either with yourself or with your family or friends. And what was so new about what the Lord was doing with this ministry is he was combining everything. He would send me into the hospitals, Stanford Hospital, Lucille Packer Children's Hospital, County Hospitals, Kaiser Veterans Hospital, all over the Bay Area. And, and I would go there loving the people that I would pray for, creating relationship, and then he would do the healing. So he was combining all of this, and he showed me a new way to pray. Even in the medical field, we tend to pray more the way the chaplains do. I've spoken to doctors all over the country, and most of us tend to pray for blessing. I've spoken to surgeons in different fields who literally will tell me they get down on their hands and knees before doing a surgical procedure, and they will pray to the Lord, please heal my patient. Well, they don't usually use the word. Maybe, maybe they use the word heal. Again, it's not a word we normally use. But take them safely through the procedure. Help them to heal. Make sure they don't have side effects, complications. What the Lord showed me that was different was that he wanted me to pray into the illness itself and to pray down every single chemical pathway that I understood as a physician was impacting that person. So I prayed as if the Lord himself, the creator, who created us in the greatest detail, could restore every single function in that person. And that is what I saw him do over and over again. I saw very few people pass on and, and go back to heaven. What I saw was that if someone passed on, it was because it was truly their time to go back to the Lord. Mostly I saw people be healed. And I come because of that with the greatest faith and trust that everyone can be healed. There is nothing that the Lord cannot heal, whether it's physical or mental or emotional. Every one of us can be healed. That's what he showed me. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to know, which is that by combining these fields that usually do not work together, the sum is greater than the parts. And his supernatural miracle healing through love, through faith and trust, but also through the wisdom and knowledge that we have as doctors can create an amazing outcome. So I went as often as three times a week into the hospitals when I was first starting, still working in the medical field, working to combine the two, and without any sense that there was anything else. If you had told me six years ago that I would be standing here today speaking with all of you, I couldn't even conceive of it. To me, it was just being with the Lord, being in his presence, and seeing him do incredible miracles. But there was more. And, I, and as he started to show me this and unfold what this ministry was all about, I began to see that, that he really had a, a very big plan for bringing medicine and spirit together. So he guided me to do, a few years ago, a Facebook page. And I thought it was something that was supposed to complement all of the hospital healing I was doing. Um, I was also doing street ministry at that time, even, even praying for people in their homes. Yet he showed me there was more, and I started a Facebook page with about 10 followers that were all friends of mine that I begged, <laughs> like my Facebook page. And I gave health tips, you know, healthy living tips. And the page went nowhere. It was like a zero. 
Nobody came on, nobody was excited. I, I worked really hard. And then after a few months, the Lord spoke to me again very strongly, and he said, Susan, this is my page. This is, this is a page for me. It's not health tips and healthy brownie recipes and how to baste a turkey at Thanksgiving and have it be a healthy turkey. It was his page. So I switched the page over, and immediately he began to bless the page as he did the medical ministry itself, and the page just completely took off. All of a sudden, I was having 100,000 people showing up for one post, or 500,000 people, or 800,000 people. With, you know, we were a tiny little page, 20 people. And then it started to grow really fast. Um, hundreds of people an hour were starting to come on as followers. Um, 70,000 people a month. And so our page is now a million, 200,000 followers. And we've had millions and millions of people on the page. Some weeks we've had as many as 5 million people. And still, there was no ministry. It was just a doctor who happened to be a minister doing the Lord's work. Um, we only became a real ministry this last year. We're not even a year old. And we became a ministry because the Lord was leading us to um, advance his kingdom by starting to actually reach out and teach how to combine medicine with, with ministry, medicine and spiritual. So the school is only about four or five months old in terms of our teaching, but um, we've, we've gone through a medical training for people in ministry, prayer intercessors, people who work with healing rooms, and I've been teaching a, um, a special class on supernatural healing in the Lord and how to actually get somebody out of a wheelchair. How do you do this? How do you pray to see a quadriplegic walk? So these are the kind of things that I was teaching. And I just want to mention to you that we're starting an internship and an advanced training. And really, it's for anybody who has the calling of the Lord on their heart to want to learn how to pray this way. We're just starting it. I did bring some flyers. If any of you are interested, they're, they're outside. So I welcome all of you to look more into our ministry if you're interested. But what I want to do now is, after giving you a, a quick kind of introduction, is I want to go to the real star of the show, which is the Lord. And I'd like to share some wonderful testimonies with you of incredible healings that he has done. So I'd like to start with, um, we call them miracle stories. And I will just be um, showing some different pictures with testimony. And I'll mention whenever we want to go to the next slide. So I'd like to start with um, the, the testimony of a little boy who is, he was a year and a half when I started to pray for him which wasn't really very long ago. What you're looking at is a little child who was born completely brain impaired. He was a boy who had just extremely poor neurological function. He was not able to go through normal developmental phases as a child would. And the, when the parents um, brought him to the the medical doctors who were caring for him, including a pediatric neurologist, other medical doctors, um, they told the parents that he had very little chance of developing normally ever, and that they should expect to have a, a, a caregiver caring for him for the rest of his life, however long his life would be. Um, the parents are not, they were not Christian, they were from a Hindu background, and so they took him back to India, and they brought him to the Hindu priest to be prayed over, and it was a zero. Nothing happened. He just did not improve. And so they came back to the U.S. The parents are both computer software engineers down in Silicon Valley. And, and at that time, the mother was so frustrated, she told me she literally cursed the Hindu priest. She cursed herself, and she cursed her son. And, and then she came back to the U.S., and at that time, God entered her life. 
He blessed the family. She began to learn about Jesus and meet believers, and she became a baby Christian. She quickly learned that Jesus is the greatest healer that the world has ever known, that there is no one but the Lord who can heal and create these miracles. So she was determined to find someone that could pray for him through the Lord. She found me somehow, and she started to email me and ask would I pray for her son. She said, my son is hopeless. And when I met him, um, go back to the first picture, the original picture, and what you're seeing is the mom holding up the little boy because he flops over. Um, he's, when you can see he's completely introverted. He does not even know there's a mom there. He doesn't relate to the environment. He was screaming and yelling if he wasn't introverted drooling. He was just not, he just wasn't functioning. And so when I prayed for him, we had to lie him out on a little bench because he could not sit up. The mom stood him up. He collapsed. He couldn't sit up. So I started to pray. And as I got into the prayer, things started to shift. He stopped screaming. The drooling stopped. And I could see there was a shift in his muscle tone. Now, what I want to show you next is how he looked after prayer. Look at the after. Look. The Lord gave him literally a new brain, a new nervous system. And I want to show you a few pictures. This is within the first week. Look at he's, look what he's doing. He's reacting to the environment. He started to connect with his mom and dad. They were so happy. Their only child, their first child. And all of a sudden, their son was back with them for the first time. Another picture, look. He's pushing furniture. He's sitting up by himself. Another picture. There he is with his mom. And he's walking. And then, another picture. Look at that. He's looking at a picture book. And his mom has actually come to some of our healing events that we do. And when she comes there, she will pick up her child and show him off to everyone there to show them what the Lord has done with her child and with the whole family. Because the Lord is a relational God, as we know. He loves all of us. And when one person is sick in the family, everyone is sick in a sense. We're all affected by our loved ones, whether it's family or friends. And when the Lord heals one, he heals all. And with this family, he healed the mom of birth problems that had arisen from this child's birth. He healed the, the work, the finances of the family. He took care of them as a family unit. It was really special. Let's go to the next picture. So what you're looking at, you will see the front in a minute, but what you're looking at is the back of a 16-year-old um, high school student who's quadriplegic. Um, he's from down in the South Bay, and he was biking one, one weekend day, and he was in the South Bay and fell off his bike, but he fell down a mountainside, down an embankment, and he broke his neck, and he was quadriplegic. So what he had to look forward to was spending the rest of his life in a wheelchair with no use of his arms or legs, not even able to move the wheelchair with his arms. It meant that he would have to move the wheelchair with a stylus, you know, through mouth controls. That, he had a high up cervical fracture, it was bad. But the Lord was so loving and kind and the family were believers, and they were just passionate about him receiving prayer. So I prayed for him, and I got to see in the hospital function after function restored in the Lord. He was able to use a computer again. He was able to feed himself. And finally, he was able to walk. And you're seeing as he was first starting to walk. And in fact, a few people from our ministry are here today joining us. One of our doctors is here, Dr. Malou Cipriano, and Claire Roberts is here, who's a Christian counselor. And Claire was with me. 
when he first started to walk and the family was just beside themselves. Um, she remembers it to this minute, what it was like for the family to see the son start to walk. We can go to the next picture. Here he is with hospital staff. And again, he's standing, he's, he's able to walk. But even more special was I kept in touch with the family. And the mom and I were in contact. And she said, I have some pictures to show you. So she emailed me some pictures that I want to share with you all. So look. You're looking at a mountain climbing quadriplegic. Christopher Reeves never walked, much less could climb to the top of a mountain. Look at the next picture. He's with his mom. Look, look at the joy and the happiness on their faces. It's beautiful. And I was really blessed in that I was able to speak with him just recently. And he was going off to college, not in a wheelchair, not on a cane or a walker, but fully ambulatory, fully walking again. No physical therapy, nothing. And he was going to a campus that was hilly, without a car, no bike, just his own legs. And he just went off and no problem. I caught him right before he was leaving with his parents. So let's go to the next picture. So what you're looking at now is a little girl who is blind. She's blinded in one of her eyes and she has a tumor, cancer, that is causing the blindness. And the mother brought her to one of our healing events, much like the kind of healing event I'll be doing with all of you here tomorrow. So I'm really excited to show this to you because it's very similar to what we'll all be doing together. And she was prayed over at our event and her, her vision came back right away. And we were able to, to check the blinded eye and she could see out of the blinded eye. She could read a little book. And when she went back to, their, to the ophthalmologist, to the eye doctor, there was no trace of cancer. It was completely gone, <laughs> totally gone. And that is what the Lord does. He just is a, our healer and our, our savior. Let's go to the next picture. So this is a really special sequence that's very close to my heart. You're looking at Jeffrey, who has probably the worst case of cerebral palsy that I have ever seen in my medical career. He was completely crippled. I mean, cerebral palsy cases are, some are more cri crippled and some are less in terms of their capacities. He was at the far end. He could not really do anything. Um, and he was also blind. So his father had to quit his career, and he was his full-time caregiver. Jeffrey's 21. Um, he was in a diaper. And because he's blind and completely impaired, and full-time in a wheelchair, they couldn't even school him because um, let me show you a few more pictures and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. There's another picture of him, but the most, really the most significant picture is the next one. And I want you to look at him really closely. Look at his arms and legs. It almost looks like he's having a temper tantrum, doesn't it? Like he's flailing around, he's kicking his arms, kicking his legs. That's how he was. And that's his mom, that's Dancia. And she was a student at our school. That's how they came to me. And so Jeffrey could not stay still even for a minute at a time. I don't know how they even cared for him for, for 21 years. He was impossible, just so difficult. And she asked if I would pray for him. So again, she brought him to a gathering similar to what we'll be doing tomorrow at one of our healing um, events. And it was amazing because I, I laid hands on him and it was really hard to work with him. He was constantly pulling my hands off. He just was agitated. He couldn't sit still. I put my hand back on, he'd tear it off. And I just kept persevering. 
and I prayed into his brain, I prayed into his nervous system, and I started to see there was a little bit of a shift going on. His parents noticed it immediately. It was the first time in 21 years that anything had started to shift with him. It was amazing. So um, let me show you what the Lord did with him because I've prayed for him about five times progressively. And I do want to make the point that I've seen thousands of instant healing miracles, but I also do see progressive miracles and progressive healings. He was one of those, but it was awesome the way the Lord healed him. Look at him. He's no longer in a wheelchair. He's raising his arm and he's praising the Lord. Look at the next picture. He's hugging a friend. Look at the next picture. Look at this. Look, he's playing the piano. How about that? Look at the next picture. He's in Walmart with a shopping cart. And he's no longer blind. The Lord healed the blindness as well. So he has his sight back. And for the first time, he's never in a wheelchair anymore. He can see. And for the first time, his parents are showing him books and iPads. And he's learning how to read. He's never been able to do this. And now they can start to teach him. It's really beautiful, really special. So let's go to the next picture. So what you're looking at here, we're now in the pediatric ICU of one of the big hospitals in our area. And you're looking at a little girl named Analia. And she is seriously ill, as you can see. Um, she's in a neck brace. She's, she's in a coma. She's completely asleep. And she had severe brain injury. She had to have a hole drilled through her skull, a burr hole, um, and a tube inserted just to pull out fluid and blood to prevent even more damage to her brain, to relieve the pressure on her brain. I prayed for many patients like that who are in comas, who have had these holes made in their head, and I've seen patient after patient come out of coma. It's been amazing. So I prayed for her because I was also praying for the father, who was also in the accident. He broke his femur, which is the big, heavy bone of our leg. It's the biggest bone of our body. And he broke all of his hip and pelvic bones. He couldn't walk. I prayed for him, and his walking came back very quickly. But the little girl was in a coma. And the mom and the grandmother asked me to pray for Analia. So I went into the pediatric ICU and prayed for her. And I always thought in praying for her of the words of Jesus with the little girl that she's not dead, she's asleep. That's how I regarded her, that she was asleep. And so I want to show you one more picture. Here she is in the ICU. You can see her, her arm is fractured. She has a cast. You can see she's taking oxygen. And she's asleep. But I prayed for her, and she came out of the coma very quickly, and even more special, no brain damage at all. She was speaking again, walking. She was discharged from the hospital a month early. And I want to show you what happened very soon, right after prayer. Look. Look at this little princess. Isn't that beautiful? Look what the Lord did with her. Now, I want to show you the next picture. This is the father and her, both together, both healed. And then this is the mom. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? So I think that's the last picture. And what I'd like to do is spend the rest of our time together in a little bit of prayer with all of you. Um, we don't have the time to pray the way we're going to do tomorrow night where it's going to be an evening devoted to prayer, and I'm going to have a chance to pray medically over everybody. That's, that's what I want to do. I don't want to just call out a few people. I want everybody to be blessed and everybody to leave when we do this tomorrow night better than when they came in. I don't want just a few people healed. I want everybody 
to experience the healing of the Lord. That's my goal. But we want to do a little bit of healing now. Um, so I'd like to do a prayer, just a little prayer over you. I can't go down all the chemical pathways because we're close to the end of the service. But I'd like to do that just to, to start. And I think that we also have the opportunity to invite the prayer team up. So would you like them to come up now even? So we can do both at once. It would be wonderful to have the prayer team come up and start to do individual prayers for those of you that need it. And then I'll just kind of do a little bit of a corporate prayer over you. And so we just want to ask anybody that wants to come up now and just, um, and even, um, even the, we have again a few healthcare providers from, from our ministry if, if they want to pray as well. This will be really precious and special. So we'll just let everybody come up who wants to come up, who's on your prayer team, and then I'll start to, to pray. I found, by the way, this is a very powerful way to pray, which is where we have um, the prayer intercessors praying over the individual and then people receiving the medical prayer as well. It's very powerful in the Lord to do this. So is everybody up from your team now? Or Wonderful. So let's just all pray together. We're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. We're all part of the family of God. And we're all here today to worship him, receive his love, and really to love one another. That's what the Lord wants. He wants us to love him and to love each other, love our neighbor. So it's a beautiful opportunity here at this wonderful church to, to, to fulfill that in the Lord. And, and I just want each of you for a few minutes just to get into that peaceful place of receiving, receiving what the Lord has to give you. Just come into a place of ease and comfort. So let's all just pray together for a few minutes here, knowing that the Lord loves each and every one of us, that he created the earth, he created the universe, but he created each one of us individually. And there isn't anything with any of us that he cannot heal, that he cannot bless. He can bless your mind. He can bless your heart, your soul, your physical body, and every part of your life. So, dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your love, your blessings, your goodness, you are such a kind, loving Father. You have a heart for each and every one of us. And you, we are special to you. And you want us to be uplifted in you, in relationship, to know you, to hear your voice, to feel your guidance and your touch upon our lives. That's very difficult when we are sick, whether it's illness of our mind or of our feelings, of our physical body, it separates us from you. We are meant to not be sick. Illness is of the enemy, it's of the devil, and it is only there to keep us from the Lord, to deflect us, to give us pain, to give us discomfort, to, to take away the functions that we're meant to have in the Lord. And when all of these are healed, we can come fully into the love of God and our lives are shifted. So there is no other purpose for illness except for the evil works of the enemy to keep you from the Lord 
and for you not to feel your birthright. Yet, it's very difficult for all of us on the earthly level to live in that perfect place of the Lord. I have never, ever met a perfect person, a person who has never suffered, who has never had pain. Even if it's not your own pain, we have pain when our loved ones are suffering. It's very difficult to experience that which the Lord has for us. So just as the Lord tells us in the Bible to pray without ceasing, like the persistent widow, to ask and ask and ask, it's the same thing with our physical bodies. The more we pray over our physical body, along with our soul, along with our thoughts, we come closer and closer to him. The enemy has less and less effect on our lives. And that is why this kind of combining of this is so crucial and so beneficial. So Lord, I just want to pray for each of us here that you bring us into perfect physical and chemical balance. Wherever the enemy has impacted you, whether it's your heart or your lungs, or your immunity and has caused you to have cancer, whether it's your joints, your muscles, your ligaments and tendons, and you have pain and stiffness, and it's hard for you to move around, whether the enemy has impacted you in your endocrine system, and you have imbalances in your thyroid, or your pancreas, or your adrenals or your reproductive glands or whether he has affected your brain and you have Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis or an autoimmune disease the list is endless I could sit here all day just naming off illness but however the enemy has affected you illness only occurs when the chemistry and physiology of our body gets thrown out of its perfect balance. The Lord has created us to be in perfect balance, that all of the complementarity of the chemicals of our body should be working in sync. Lord, that is how you made us. And I just want to bring his love and his light, his rivers of living water, into each and every one of you so that you begin to feel his touch in those areas that have been hard to heal for you where you have gone to doctors where you have been prayed over where things are just not progressing the way that you would like if the enemy has affected your mind and you are depressed or you are sad or feeling hopeless or victimized. We always hear about the cancer victim. That is the word that is always used. If you have cancer, you are a victim. That always occurs not only as a physical issue, but as a mindset, because we cannot separate our minds from our body. We do not have chemicals in our brain that are labeled mental, emotional chemicals and other chemicals called physical chemicals. They are all the same chemical. So our mind and our bodies are completely entwined. And when we heal one, we heal the other. That's why our brains are so important, because the Lord created them to regulate everything in our body. So Lord, I just want to pray over each person here that they are going to begin to experience the fullness of their love and that as you flow through them your love and your light like rivers of living water just uplifting them in you just go into those parts of you that you know need healing again if you're struggling with something emotional that's because the part of your brain that regulates either slow function or rapid function is out of balance. 
when your inhibitory chemicals are shut down, that is where you get the depression, the victimhood from. Just no hope. And then people who are out of balance to the other side are in too much what we call excitation in the medical field. Those are the people that will go to their grave fighting. They are not the victims. They will fight and fight and fight and never give up, even if they go to exhaustion. Or they are people who are in panic or anxiety. They're in hyper-rev mode. And the enemy will push many of us to one end or the other. And it's a struggle because when life comes on us and it is hard and it is difficult and we have to get through trauma and injury, our brain flips to one side or the other. We go out of balance. And Lord, I pray for each and every one of you here that you start to come into that place of balance because when you do, you will no longer be the victim you will no longer be in panic or anxiety, over-revved. You will come into balance. You won't even be flipping between depression and anxiety. Some people just flip between the two, but they're never in balance. And I pray that for all of us here, that the Lord just begins to bring you into that place of perfect peace, His love, joy, happiness, faith and trust, and that that's what balance does. When you are mentally balanced, chemically balanced, and spiritually balanced, you begin to experience more and more the fruits of the Spirit. That is what He wants for you. He wants that for each and every one of us. I pray also that he come into every part of your life and that he bless you not only in your physical and mental health but that he open the heavens and that he bless you in everything that you do your family your friends um, your work your relationships your finances even the little frustrating parts of your life your cars your housing whatever it is that you need his touch on. I just pray that his love just pour it onto you. And most of all, the biggest gift of all is his love. And I pray that his love just flow into you and that you experience his touch, his love for you, and that you know how precious you are to him. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>